أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا بلوناهم كما بلونا أصحاب الجنة إذ أقسموا ليصرمنها مصبحين ولا يستثنون فطاف عليها طائف من ربك وهم نائمون فأصبحت كالصريم فتنادوا مصبحين أن اغدوا على حرثكم إن كنتم صارمين فانطلقوا وهم يتخافتون ألا يدخلنها اليوم عليكم مسكين وغدوا على حرد قادرين صدق الله العظيم In the previous ayahs of Surah Al-Qalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the arrogant people of Quraysh who because of their wealth, their families, their power, were rejecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were denying all the ayahs of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not only that their wealth and the abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with have made them so arrogant that they started insulting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and accusing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of things that he have never committed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them to do an example. In these ayahs, that example is mentioned in standing ayah number 17. And the example is given by some people who had a garden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا بَلَوْنَاهُمْ كَمَا بَلَوْنَا أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ We tried them the way we tried the people of the garden. And Mufassirin have narrated that there was a virtuous man somewhere close to Yemen and this is about some time after the time of Isa alayhi salatu was salam which means the incident is of Bani Israel and before the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there was a virtuous man who had a nice garden and he was he was very generous helping the needy people from that garden, giving a lot out of that to the poor people. When that man died, he had three children who thought that we should not continue doing the way our father was dealing with the garden. And from now on we are not going to give these poor people anything. But we all know it, when the poor people get used to getting something from somewhere, so they're expecting it. And part of expectation is, when they would see you there, and they will see that you are at a position of giving now, so they will come and try to get their share out of it. And especially they know that you keep their share there. So, these brothers, he started thinking, what should we do now to prevent these people from coming to us? So their plan was, what we need to do is early morning. We will get up early morning. And before the day break, we will get to our garden, lock all the doors. And then we will 
pluck all the fruit from there and just keep it for ourselves, we will not get anything out of that to the poor people. The plans were made. They went to sleep in the night. And early in the morning they started calling each other, let's go quick, don't waste any time. And finally they left home. After leaving, they went to their garden and while they are on their way, they continued also reminding each other. And each of them is telling the others, make sure that you don't allow anyone to come in. Because their firm plan is now that we are not going to give anything to any person. And they are continuously reminding each other of it because each of them is afraid that the other pe- person might feel sorry for the poor person and allow someone in. When they got to their garden, they did not find it there. So they thought they had lost their way. They came to a wrong direction, to a wrong place. They started walking around it. And finally realized, no, it's the same place. And now they knew that because of their bad intention of not helping the poor and needy people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have punished them by burning down the whole garden and nothing existed over there anymore. It was just a land. Some of us have also mentioned a background of these ayahs that these ayahs were revealed after the battle of Badr because at the time of the battle of Badr the kuffar of Quraysh when they looked at their number they thought there is no way that we can leave these Muslims the script from as today. So Abu Jahl started going around in the army and he's telling people these are few people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al Kareem that when the kuffar were looking at the Muslims in the beginning, they thought they are even less than what they were. To begin with, they were 313 comparing to 1000. But when the kuffar were looking at them, they could see even less than 313. It seemed to them they are less, much less than that. So Abu Jahl is going around in the army and is telling people that make sure that you capture as many people as you can. We don't want to kill too many. We want to capture more people. So each two, three of you go and capture one person. Time up, then run to the other person. And he's making all of these plans that now we are going to capture them because once we capture them, then we can punish them the way we want. If you kill them, then we don't have any power over the rest of the people. But if you capture them, then we have a lot of things that we can do with it. So he's going around with that message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching them a lesson that the way you people thought you have power over Muslims, this is the same thing how those people thought that they have power over their garden and they won't give it to anyone. Every person feels that he has some burden, uh, he has some power in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that these things mean nothing. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other ayah of Quran al Kareem telling the kuffar, the example of the idols that they worship, The example of the kuffar and of their idols, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's just like the spider. The spider makes a web and thinks that got a real nice castle, a strong castle. Now the spider wants to fight every other animal and beast in the world thinking I have a nice castle that will protect me. Same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Anything that the person would depend on in this life, in this world, is nothing more than a spider's web. It's just a dream. These people went to sleep and it was just like a dream. Overnight, the whole thing is burned down. In the morning they wake up, there is nothing over there anymore.
This is the reality of everything of this life. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in these ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem If you look in Surah Al-Qasas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the same thing from the story of Qarun. قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي When Qarun was proud of his wealth and very arrogantly he was walking amongst Bani Israel, his Musa alayhi salatu was salam's cousin. And Musa alayhi salatu was salam is inviting him to Islam and to the deen of Allah. Because of his wealth, Qarun did not want to accept anything when he was told Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who blessed you with all of this. So he said, his reply was, إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي I got this because of my own knowledge. Who do you want me to thank? Thank Allah for what? What did he give me? Did he send it from the heaven? No, I earned it. This is the knowledge that I learned. This is the education I got. إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِلْم He was proud of that علم that he had. I got it because of my knowledge, because of my degree, because of my education. If we look into our souls and into our minds, we might find some Qarun sitting in our brains also. Who occasionally tells us that what you are getting is because of your knowledge. Because of your power. Because of your abilities, because of your education, because of your degrees. This is where you are getting all of this from. See, there are other people who don't have these degrees, who don't have this education. They don't have what I have. This is Qarun. And this is Qarun's thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us of this type of thinking. But never think that way. Now let's go into the ayahs and I will inshallah explain more as we go into the ayahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا بَلَوْنَاهُمْ كَمَا بَلَوْنَا أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ We tried the kuffar of Quraysh, these kuffar, just the way we tried the people of the garden. And I mentioned what garden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. إِذْ أَقْسَمُوا لَيَصْرِمُنَّهَا مُصْبِحِينَ When they swore, that they will pluck it, they are going to pick it, to pick the fruits of it, musbihin, early in the morning. If you look at the word aqsamu, they were taking oath, they were swearing, that early morning we will just go and get everything. When would a person would say something like this? Only when he's so confident that I have total power over what I'm saying. I swear I will go and get everything I won't give anything to anyone else. That's only when he's sure. If normally, now we look at our soul, you leave home, you're going to a town that's close from here, you have your car, and we know that our abilities, alhamdulillah, I can drive. And I can tell the person, I swear in two hours I will be there, then I will do this. I'm coming to you. But, if it is a winter, it's snowing bad. Might even be freezing rain. At that time, we have the same car. The keys in our hands. Same license. All of the abilities are same. None of the abilities have been reduced or taken away from us. It's only there is a snow out there. Now the person will say, inshallah, hundred times, that inshallah, I will get there. I hope inshallah, I will make it on time. Why? Now he thinks there is something that will not make him depend on himself so much. There is something that he feels he can never confront. He feels he has no power over it. There is a fear there now. When a person forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power, and he feels all the power that I have is the greatest power now, 
I have the key, I have the car, the gas is full in the car, I have a nice new car, and I know how to drive, my license is in my pocket, my credit cards are in the wallet, why can't I get there? With all the same things. When there is a snow out there, the person is afraid that he may not be able to get there. Now he's doubting his abilities. He knows there is something stronger than his abilities out there. That can challenge his abilities. He will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hundred times. He will beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hundred times before he would leave. As he is driving, he will continuously keep on praying. He is not dependent on his abilities at this time. And this tells us that how many times we lose faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real faith, the faith that we should have, it does not mean we lose iman. But the type of iman in the faith that we should have, many of these times, most of the time, we lose that. And we are missing that. That faith should be there even in normal circumstances. When there is no snow out there, the roads are clean and clear. The sunshine, with all of the abilities that I have, but still, I should know that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will, I won't be able to get there. And that will make me realize that my power is nothing. See, to remind us of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have taught us dua for everything that we do in our life. A person is riding a car. Dua is, Subhanalladhi sakhara lana hadha. Wa ma kunna lahu muqrineen. Glory to Allah who gave us power over it. Otherwise, what's our power to use all of this plastic metal and all the things that are used in making the car have power over these things and then use them for our conveniences and use them to get us wherever we'd like to go. What's our power to use these animals that we ride? Whereas if the same animal will get violent, it's enough to kill ten people like us. Subhanallah sakhara lana hada. Glory to Allah who gave us power over it. What is this dua? It's reminding us that don't think because you had the money you were able to buy the car. Don't think because you have the key and the license you are able to drive the car. I have seen it only some time back. It happened in front of me. Driving on this Route 33, 33, just at the exit, a person is taking the exit, and all of a sudden he gets into the wall. He, he smashes the car into the wall. What happened? Had a severe heart attack. I started looking. What, what, happened, what happened to this person? Did he lose control over the car? What happened? And right there, the ambulances came, and they said, no, he, the person had a heart attack, severe heart attack, and he's unconscious. Just look at this. Can happen to any person. No guarantee. If we go and buy some merchandise, we need lifetime guarantee. But we know we, we don't have a guarantee even for our life. We have no guarantee that our our brain will continue working next moment. Our eyesight will keep on giving us the same sight and make us able to see everything that we are see, seeing at this moment. All of these things are proofs, clear proofs, that we should never depend on ourselves. Never depend on our abilities. Never think that I would do it. This is exactly what Shaitan thought. He says, Ana khayrum min. Should I do sajda for Adam alayhi I'm better than him. And when that thing comes in between that I, myself, my abilities, my power, Right then and there, the person loses everything that he has because that is the main thing that we need in this life is confidence in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of this. And I was saying that this Qarun, the story of Qarun, 
is reminding us of the same fact as he was saying, and today, there is, I don't think there will be a better example today than the example of Harun. Because he also depended on his knowledge the way most of us today depend on our knowledge. Because nowadays, this is the time of knowledge. People are learning different types of sciences. Universities are full. Colleges are full. People are knocking at their doors. It's just like a fire there. Everyone wants to get over there and see what's going on. Everyone wants to get in there. People think you get over there, you will be the richest person in the world. You will be lucky only if you get over there. If you don't get an opportunity to be over there and they don't accept you over there, you are one of the unfortunate people. إِنَّمَا أُتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي This was the call of Farun that I got all of this because of my own knowledge. And today also our certificates and degrees. Those pieces of paper that we like to hang on the wall. We depend on them so much that we think this is everything. This is the thing that will make my life. And because of that, you will see because of those papers that we get from there, parents even accept their children losing faith, losing Iman, losing Quran, losing Hadith, losing the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would lose anything and everything. They would sacrifice anything and everything for the sake of getting that piece of paper so that they can prove they have that knowledge through which they can survive and make a good living in this world. This is the same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. Inna بَلَوْنَا هُمْ كَمَا بَلَوْنَا أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ We tried them the way we tried the people of that garden. And as I said, that those people were so confident in Aqsamu that they were swearing that this is what we would do in the morning. We will just take everything for ourselves. Again, another reminder. In the same ayahs, these people are making the plans at night time. Their plans are being made in the night time. No one knows about the plans. But of course, after making these plans, they need to rest. They have to go to sleep. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ People make their plans. Allah has His own plans. Allah is the best planner. When we see this, when we look at these type of ayahs, they are real good reminders for our souls that how many times we plan that tomorrow I would be doing all of these things. We have a long list of things. We don't spend a single moment praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy and feasible for us to do all of what we have planned. We think, I need more rest than, doing, than praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is exactly what wayam kuruna means. People keep on making their plans. Allah is the best planner. Walayastatnoon. And these people were not even making any exceptions. There are two translations of Walayas Tathnoon. One is, they would not even say, Insha'Allah. This is one translation of Walayas Tathnoon, that they would not even say, Insha'Allah. Because they are confident. We can do it. Why should I say it? The second meaning of Walayas Tathnoon could be, that they would not make any exception. Not a single fruit, not a single apple, not a single banana, not a single orange, that we would give it to the poor people. And, no exception amongst the poor people either. The person can be starving to death. We are still not going to give it to What I is this moon? No exceptions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Let me explain the literal meaning, then I will tell you the real meaning of the ayah. طَافَ يَصُوفُ طَوَافُ You know the word طَوَافُ to go around the Kaaba. So, Qafa means to take circles, to go around something. Qafa alayha Taif. Taif means a thing that was going around, went through their garden. The meaning is that the punishment of Allah, a calamity, a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, went to their garden. Qafa alayha Taifun min rabbik wahum na'imun while they were sleeping. Sometimes a small ladder 
a small word make a big difference. When I look at the word Rabbik, your Lord, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to? He's talking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not worry about what these kuffar of Quraysh had to do. Do not worry of any plan that they will make against you, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The whole kuffar of Quraysh, the whole government, with all of their power, with all of their weapons, have firmly made the plan that tonight will be the last night of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life. They see him going into his, his home. They are surrounding the house. There is no way that he can escape. Holding the open swords in their hands. Any time now, he walks out of his home, that will be the last moment of his life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the whole world that here you can see it. With all of their plans, with everything they had, with all of their power, but still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wanted to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saved him. He's hiding in the cave. All the kuffar are standing by that cave. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Jahl was looking at me. We looked at each other, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Bakr, don't you remember the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the eye of Allah that he says, وَتَرَاهُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ وَهُمْ لَا يُفْسِرُونَ You will, be seen, you will see them looking at you, but they cannot see you. Abu Bakr, he have not seen you. Don't worry about him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went through it while they were sleeping. فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَفَّرِينَ In the morning, أَصْبَحَ صُبْحَ Early in the morning, it was as if it already has been harvested. Someone have already cut all the fruit from it. Now, these people are going around, looking for their garden. Asfarim. First thing, let me explain the word. Asfarim. Asfarim has two meanings in Arabic language. One is to cut something. And this is what, what I translated here is that early in the morning, it was as if it was already harvested. The second meaning of Asarim is the darkness of the night. So in that sense it will mean that in the morning it was burned down black just like the darkness of the night. There is a hadith in Ibn Abi Hatim, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says that I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talking about this ayah. He said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْمَعَاصِي Refrain from committing sin. Because إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيُذْنِبُ الذَّنْبِ فَيُحْرَمُ بِهِ رِزْقًا كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَهُ Sometime a person commits a sin because of that sin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevents him from getting some of the sustain and some of the risk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned it for him. He prevents him from getting it. And another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا تُنْصَرُونَ وَتُرْزَقُونَ بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ You get Allah's help, and you get the risk, sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the weak people amongst you. This is how you get the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we feel that these people, the poor people, or the people who are dependent on us, the people who depend on us, because of these people I lose a lot. I have to spend so much on these people. They eat up everything that I have. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that you are getting it because of those people. فَتَنَادَوا مصبحين. Now they started, early in the morning they started calling each other as is the normal situation that when people have planned at night, now early morning everyone will be blaming others. Come on, you are... Uh, taking too much time, and because of you we are getting late, come on, let's leave quick, 
فَتَنَادَوْ مُصْبِحِينَ They started calling each other early in the morning أَنِغْدُوا عَلَىٰ حَرْثِكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَارِمِينَ Now let's go early to your crop if you want to harvest it, if you want to take it. أَنِغْدُوا عَلَىٰ حَرْثِكُمْ Quickly let's go over there. Let's go and get everything. فَانْطَلَقُوا وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ Now they left while they were whispering to each other. They were talking in low tones to each other. Why? They're afraid that someone might hear them and poor people might start following them knowing that these people are going to their garden today and we might get some of our share. So they, they want to even speak slowly. They're afraid that someone might see them. Allah يَدْخُلَ النَّهَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ Even now the conversation, the whole plan, conversation, thought, everything is just devoted to one thing. And that is, Allah يَدْخُلَ النَّهَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ don't let even a single poor man enter into the garden. Don't let a single man come into the garden. When you look at these ayahs, you can tell that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the example of the kuffar of Quraysh. As he said, that inna balawnahum, we tried these kuffar of Quraysh the, the way we tried the people of the garden. And in the Previous ayahs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the kuffar of Quraysh, manna ilmil khayr. They like to hold every good for themselves. They don't like to give out anything. Here a good example of this. That their whole thought is don't give anything to any person. Allah yadkhul annaha al-yawma alaykum miskeen. Waghadaw ala harbin qadirin. So they went in the morning thinking that they have power to prevent harb. What does hard mean? Hard means to prevent and to show your anger to someone. You have the power to show the anger. This is the literal meaning of hard. So when they were going, وَغَدَوْ غَدَا means to leave in the morning. They went in the morning عَلَىٰ حَرْضٍ قَادِرِينَ thinking that they have a full power of preventing the poor people and not only preventing them, if anyone would try to get there, then they also have a power of getting angry on them and by force forcing them out of the garden and making them stay away from it. This is a very important ayah of the whole story. Ala hardin qadirin. That they thought they have a power over preventing people from it by force. This qudra, that normally we always talk about it, that it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of these times, or most of the times, we get misled by some of the power that we have. And we think that through my power I can do a lot. And what people can do? They don't own it. It's not their place. It's not their business. And here another point that we need to remember that normally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran al Kareem when he talks about he gives examples of these times, he gives examples of gardens. Because in those days the best business was having nice gardens. The larger land you have and the better garden you have, the wealthier you can you are considered. So, that was one of the best businesses in those days. And accordingly, we may change the word garden to any business we like to put over there. Whatever business you can name, any business that you can name, just you can fit it over there and apply the whole example to anything that people might depend on. Wealth, business, power, abilities, knowledge, anything and any type of business you just Name it, and it will fit over there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَغَدَوْ عَلَىٰ حَرْضٍ قَادِرِينَ فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا When they saw their garden, they said, إِنَّا لَضَالُونَ We have lost our way. We are not this right place. We must be lost. بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ No, but we are deprived from it, from having the fruits of it. بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ After going around and seeing all the signs and realizing, no, this is the same place, now they realize, no, it's the same place. بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ We have been deprived from it. قَالَ أَوْسَطُهُمْ 
ألم أقول لكم لو لا تسبحون The best among them. Awsat means the one in the middle. Some people thought that it refers to the age. That there were three of them and the one who was the middle of the age. The, uh, the brother who was between the two. He said that. But all the Mufassirin agree that the word Awsat here means the best of them. So the best of them said, Alam أَقُلْ لَكُمْ Then I, use, I say to you people, لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ Why you people do not glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Looking at the ayah, it seems that that person, whoever was the best of them, whether it was the oldest or the youngest or the middle or anyone else, looking at the ayah, it seems that that person tried to stop them in the beginning. And he told them, لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ What does tasbih mean? Glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in other words, he reminded them in the beginning that fear Allah. Don't get into these things. Don't do something like this. Your father was giving it to the poor people. Let's not deprive them from it. Let's help the poor people. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He reminded them of the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they did not listen. When they did not listen, he also went with them. Now when they went and they saw the punishment, He, everyone is angry, but he has now an extra point where he can show his anger to his brothers. So he says, Alam أَقُلْ لَكُمْ لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ Then I say to you people, that how come you people are not praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means then I remind you people of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you people did not listen to me. This normally happens. Always you find someone in the family, in the household, in the friends, in the community who likes to talk about good things. And whenever people do something wrong, he likes to remind them. But sometimes those people are so weak that after reminding, when they see that the other people, the rest of the people in the family, in the household, in the community, in the neighborhood, whoever, in the masjid, they are not willing to accept. So instead of staying away from that evil, they also join them. They don't want to leave those people. They don't want to leave the group. They love that group. They don't want to break off the group. They're very weak. But they have little better understanding than the rest of the people. So they like to take some words. They like to throw some words there. Who knows someone will accept it. After throwing those words, they think that we have done whatever we were supposed to do. I have fulfilled my responsibility. As some of the parents will come and tell us, what can I do? I told my son, a lot of times I tell him, pray, pray, but he never prays. So, please, you make dua for him. I tried my best with him. How much you want me to try? Once I was asked, specifically I was asked a question, after we talked in detail about, this was, In other tone, I talked in detail about the rights of children and responsibilities of parents towards their children and towards saving and safeguarding their iman and their faith. So specifically a question was asked that we try our best. And yet they don't perform the salah. They don't listen to us. And in this country you can't do anything to them. So what is it that you can do then? How much can we try? At that time, it came to my mind As soon as the person asked the question, it came to my mind. And I said to that person, at least try with him as much as you try with his schooling and with his homework. That if he would, tomorrow if he would come to you and he says, I don't want to continue with the school. I don't want to continue this college. He is in the university and I don't want to continue in this university. I don't want to continue this education. I'd rather drive a taxi. I'm going to be a cab driver. How much you would try at that time? You will start crying. You will pray. You will threaten. You will explain. You will run to your imam. That please make a special du'as now. It's not like missing a salah anymore. Now he doesn't want to go to the university. He doesn't want to study anymore. He's going to lose his future. Please make du'a for him. And you will get the whole family to try to explain to him. But when he misses the salah, 
you feel that I told him a couple of times, I told him so many times, and he doesn't want to do it, what can I do? So I said to the person, try at least as much as you try to send him, as much as you would try to send him to the school and to the university, if he would stop going there. Of course, it should be more than that. Much more than that. But, if not more, at least we should have that much importance of it. So, as I was saying, that there are always some people who would say some good words. Who will throw the good words, but remember, by just saying it, we have not fulfilled our responsibility. If we see people are not accepting whatever is true, and of course we have to be sure that this is the right way of life according to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once we are sure about it, and we know that people are not going to accept it, we cannot join those people in those evils. This is the rule of the Sharia. There are no two ways about it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that the problem in Bani Israel was that their scholars, specifically, the hadith talks about, their scholars used to prevent them from doing evil. But if people would not stop they would eat with them, they would drink with them, as these people have not done anything wrong at all in their lives. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw the situation, that these scholars, after trying to stop the people, yes, they speak up. But after speaking, when the same people are not accepting it, then they would go and join those people in their evil, or at least continue with their friendship continue the same type of friendship that they used to have before. No difference in relationship even after those people are doing all of those sins and committing all of these sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, because of that, فَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَ بَعْضِهِمْ بِبَعْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made their hearts the same, made the hearts of their scholars just like the hearts of those sinners. And then, when the punishment came, the whole nation was punished, including those scholars who were trying to stop them, and they were punished because they continued their relationship with those sinners the way they had it before. So even having that relationship with those sinners who are not stopping the evil is not allowed in the Sharia. Then our relationship will be with them only, the relationship of da'wah, inviting them to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Preventing them from evil. Not just continuing the regular relationship and friendship. The ayahs of the Quran al Karim that talk about Bani Israel not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the order they received of not fishing on Saturday. If you look at the tafsir of those ayahs, it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُنُوا قِرَدَةً خَاتِئِينَ we said to them, be apt. Now we find in the ayahs that some of them were turned into monkeys and some of them were turned into swine. The Mufassirin have explained that there were three kinds of people there. One was the group of people who would go and fish. The second group who would sometimes tell them, don't do it. They did not listen, so they continued their relationship with them. So they tried to stop their friends or relatives. Don't do it. But if they are doing it, what can I do now? The same situation as we have it most of the times with our soul. If he is not accepting, what can I do? It? So continue the same relationship. And the third group were of those who said, No, we cannot have any type of relationship with you people. No friendship, no relationship. And because of that, they built a wall. Because those people who were fishing on Saturdays, they were large in number. So they wanted to isolate these few people who did not want to fish on Saturdays. They wanted to isolate them. So they isolated those people. Built the wall, that few people just stay behind the wall. You are not of our group, you are not of our community. One of these days, as those people were, these people behind the wall who did not like it and they were continuously preventing them and as they did not listen they were staying away from them. 
they did not hear any noise. They did not hear people uh, walking, talking. So they climbed the wall, and to their surprise, they only saw animals over there, and two types of animals. Monkeys and pigs. Those people who were fishing on Saturday, they were, uh, they were made pigs, and those who were not fishing, but they were, they tried to stop, and after stopping, once those people did not stop, they continued their relationship, they were turned into, turned into monkeys. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it very clear to us that we cannot continue this relationship. Friendship. Same type of relationship. Unfortunately, we, many times, we get people within our families who not only that they do not want to perform the salah, they even talk against the sharia of Islam. You tell them salah, and says, what is salah? I don't, I don't believe in these things. Of course, it does not mean we should right away throw the person out of the house, but at no moment we should forget of correcting those people and finding a way of correcting the situation is just like having at our home something that's destroying the whole thing that we earn. If there is someone in the house, our wife might be the wife, or for the wife might be the husband who's eating up all of her, her, her earning, or he, she's eating all of his earning. So the person, of course, will keep on trying and will make sure that without delaying, he will take the proper steps to free one dollar party from misusing the wealth, misusing whatever they are misusing. Same thing, if there is a person who is not following the Sharia of Islam, our responsibility to do everything possible we can. And the time we think that I give up, I cannot do it, I cannot continue, he, the person is not going to listen anymore, that's the end of our relationship with that person. We have to remember. According to the Sharia, that's the, that's the mark, that, that marks the end of our relationship with that person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ أَوْسَطُهُمْ The best of them said, أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ Didn't I tell you people? How come you people who are not praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And as I mentioned, there are always people of that kind. But remember, when the punishment comes, the punishment comes to all the people because these people did not stay away from them. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ They said, Glory to Allah, we really were wrongdoers. But now, they said it after the seeing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahim. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu said, because they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their, uh, accepted their tawbah and their repentance, and he replaced them with a better garden. فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ This is another thing that normally happens. A group of people does something wrong. All of them together, they will be doing the wrong thing. Once they get into trouble, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ They start blaming each other. Because of you, this has happened. No, it happened because of you. I told you not to do it. I told you not to go there. But, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ They blame each other. It does no good to them because it's too late. These people, after blaming each other, قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ They said, Who to us? Surely, we all were transgressors. We were wrongdoers. All of us together. So they realized that it's not only one person. It's not two people. It's all the whole group together because everyone is getting the help of other people. So even that person who's considered the best, he is also part of this ayah who says, إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ Surely we all were transgressors. It's not, it did not happen because of one person. But now, عَسَى رَبُّنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَنَا خَيْرًا مِّنْهَا إِنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا رَاغِبُونَ We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us in exchange a garden that will be better than this. Surely we all turn to our Lord. كَذَلِكَ الْعَذَابِ 
Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the people of Quraysh كَذَٰلِكَ الْعَذَابِ And generally reminding all the believers and all the people this is how the punishment comes. And this is the punishment of this life وَلَعَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ And the punishment of the Akhirah is even worse. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If they know it. So, basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have reminded us of some very important things. Also, we went through uh, uh, although we went through some of the important points, just one more reminder from these ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem that many times a person does something wrong and he feels that he's doing right. Does something wrong and he feels he's doing right. This is the example of the kuffar of Quraysh. <coughs> they're opposing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they laugh at it. They feel that they're doing something great. The more they blame Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more they hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more they torture the Muslims, they feel better and they feel greater. This is how many times we do something wrong, we feel that we are doing something right. This is the same example. These people, the people who had this garden, they thought they would be doing something great for themselves by having all of that saving and keeping it for themselves. But by doing wrong, they thought they are doing something right. And the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came. This is a big lesson that we need to learn. That we really need to learn from others. We need to ask people who have experience. We need to have people who have proper knowledge. What we are doing, whether what we are doing is right or wrong. Because we might do something wrong considering it right. And the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take place. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem زُيِّنَ لَهُمْ سُوءُ أَعْمَارِهِمْ their evil deeds are beautified to them, are made to look so beautiful to them. So when they look at their evil deeds, how many times we see people, people who are dancing out there, we look at them, we feel ashamed that how can this person do this? There are people who would do shameless acts. You look at them and you feel shy by even seeing the person. And that person is not even shy. He has no shame. He feels he's doing something great. So, this is when the person loses the understanding. And there are different levels of losing that understanding. Sometimes we also lose some type of understanding. And we see an evil as a good. We see a sin as a good deed. This is a good reminder for all of us that when a person does not see the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the things. And he does not see it the way we are supposed to see it. Then the person will make a mistake and might do something wrong considering a good deed. And thus the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. And this person will be caught in the punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to salat al-mustaqeem. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين